Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my greenhouse here at Roots and Refuge Farm. If you're new here, my name is Jess. I am so glad you're here. If you're not new here, I'm also glad that you're here and welcome back. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys about planting garlic. Now I know for some of you this video is a little late uh, because you typically want to get your garlic planted before the ground freezes. So for quite a few of you, it's already very cold where you are and you have missed the window for growing garlic this year. That's okay. But for some of you, you might have some garlic that you bought seed garlic and maybe it is past the ideal window where you are. Um, I'm in zone eight in the Midlands of South Carolina and it's just about the right time to, to plant garlic. I did plant some a month ago experimentally. I'm, I'm doing three different waves to see what I like. The thing is, is that if you think I've missed the window it's too late and you have seed garlic that's just sitting there it's not gonna last for you know months until spring go ahead and put it in the ground maybe you'd miss the ideal window but it doesn't necessarily mean you miss the window where anything is possible and it's definitely gonna grow you more food in the soil rather than in the trash can. So I wasn't gonna make this video. I've made plenty of planting garlic videos before, but I thought, you know what? Somebody might end up with a garlic harvest if I go ahead and give them the nudge. So here's your nudge. Also, I do have a blog post I'm going to cover some different information and facts today. It's all written in my blog post as well as a lot of other topics. I have a blog. I know a lot of people don't realize that. It's www.rootsandrefuge.com. I'll put a link down below to the particular blog post talking about planting garlic. So if you want to check over these things again and not come back and watch the whole video, um, that information is there as well as lots of other information and recipes and pretty words and all of that stuff. So I've got two different type, types of seed garlic here today. I have this one variety called uh, Silver Rose and I am going to work on separating these cloves out while we chat about the ins and outs of planting garlic um, to get ready to go put them in the ground. So what you want to do when you're planting is you want to be able to plant an individual clove. So I bought some um, elephant garlic as well and it came already prepared this way. So it's already an individual cloves. Let's see the difference here. Elephant garlic clove, regular garlic clove. And I will say this regular garlic clove is pretty large clove of garlic. Um, elephant garlic is not a true garlic. It's actually more kin to like, it, it's like a cousin of garlic essentially in the same allium family, but it's more like a leek. But I really like it because it is a little milder in flavor. So whereas I just use a ton of garlic in cooking, I also like to have elephant garlic. Plus the cloves are so large that it's just, you know, easier to use. But if you got your garlic in full heads, you want to separate them out and get individual cloves so you can plant them. Don't peel them. You want to leave that papery skin on. You might have to peel a few layers in order to separate them. But um, that's going to help protect them from rotting in the ground. Now when you go to shop for garlic you're gonna see two things. Now you might see elephant garlic like I said that's a different thing but between true garlic varieties you'll see either hard neck or soft neck. That is largely gonna come down to preference though I have read that hard neck varieties do better for much colder climates that hard neck varieties tend to be more hardy. I don't really know that by experience just because I don't live in a really cold climate. You might experiment with that if you're trying to see, you know, what works best where you live. The difference to me whenever I'm growing them and why I choose what I choose is that hard neck varieties grow what's called a scape, which is when at the end of the season they shoot up a center stalk. Now given the chance that center stalk grows a flower is basically like that plant going to seed. And that center stalk is called a scape. And a garlic scape is so tasty. So you can cut those um, and like saute them. You can make like a garlic scape pesto. They can be used and garlic scape is just like a culinary, like it's very tasty. It's very good. This is a soft neck variety. I actually already have some hard neck varieties planted out in my garden, but um, this is a soft neck variety and a soft neck variety means that instead of getting a hard center scape, this part in the middle, the neck, this is super soft and flexible. Now on a hard neck garlic, this would be hard. But with a soft neck variety, you can actually braid these. So if you've ever seen where people have those lovely long braids of garlic where they've got all the heads clumped together, 
that was a soft neck variety. The soft neck varieties tend to be a little better for storing. It just depends on how fast you're gonna use it or how much you're actually growing that it even matters. But that's what I'm considering whenever I choose between the two. And what I generally do is I generally plant some of both. So when I break up my garlic cloves and get ready to plant them, I always sort the cloves out and I put the largest cloves in one pile and then I put the smaller cloves in another pile. If I have any that are damaged at all, like this one, I throw those off to the side because I don't want to plant those. First and foremost, I like to use the larger cloves. Um, larger cloves are just gonna make for healthier garlic heads. And sometimes if I come across like a really tiny little puny clove while I am separating, um, if this is all I have, I might plant it. But if I end up having excess, which you know, sometimes when you're buying stuff like this, like I ended up buying this really big bag, because sometimes you're buying these things and the price difference is like minimal where you go up a few pounds and it costs like significantly less per pound. And with that being the case, if I end up with extras and I've got little clubs like this, I usually just stick these off to the side, carry them in the house, and then we eat them um, rather than planting them. Because ideally you want to use the largest and healthiest cloves to plant next year's garlic. So the instructions today are going to be the same for both elephant garlic and regular garlic. So they're just the same in how they grow and how you plant them. Um, basically, whenever you plant a garlic clove, you want to put the flat side down because that's where the roots are going to come out of you want to put the pointy side up because that's where the sprout is going to come out of and you really need to have nice uh, loose prepared soil as you can see here I've got the soil in this garden bed now we did have the soil mulch that has kept it nice and moist I'm not pre-watering here um, I actually usually don't pre-water with my garlic. If my bed is a little dry, I go ahead and plant and then water the garlic in, just because that gets the bulb good and wet uh, so it can start sprouting. Now in most cases, I plant my garlic into a space that's not yet mulch. So like here you can see this garlic was planted about four weeks ago and it's come up and now we'll mulch around this. To prepare the soil for garlic planting, you're just gonna wanna make sure that your soil is worked. So if you till, then you would wanna till before you plant the garlic. If you are in gardening in a raised garden bed, maybe you had something in there previously, you just wanna remove that and work in some compost. Garlic is not super needy, but you are going to get better bulbs and cloves of garlic whenever your, your soil has nutrition. And obviously plants are gonna grow better whenever they've got nutrition. So I like to make sure that I've got some compost worked into that soil before we go ahead and plant it. This bed is kind of a, a weird situation because we actually prepared this and planted some little cabbage starts and they ended up not doing well. Um, so I t actually pulled out what was remaining of those and I'm planting with garlic. So that's why the soil was already prepared. So I like to use a dibber uh, for planting garlic. You can also just use a stick, but uh, a dibber has a pointy end. Sometimes these are also called dibbles, but um, it's just nice for poking holes and not getting dirt underneath your fingernails. <laughs> So elephant garlic cloves, I typically am going to space these about every 10 to 12 inches. Maybe just a little bit further than that. I think we'll probably do four in a row in this four foot bed. But for regular garlic cloves, I space these about every uh, four or five inches. You could give them a little more space if you do have poorer soil uh, to give them access to more nutrition, but because I do know that my soil is uh, heavily amended with compost, I can get away with planting them a little closer together and now I'm still gonna get good heads out of them. And here, I'm just going to poke a hole with my dibber and drop the clove down in. Remember, pointy side up. Now when I'm planting anything, I personally like to get all of them in the ground so I can very clearly see my spacing and then I go back over and close all the holes in and that way I don't accidentally plant things too close together without realizing it. Yeah, Lee, look at the size of that clove. That's huge. Definitely want to plant that one. You just want to make sure your whole clove is going to be completely covered when you close the soil up over it. So, all of my holes are dug. 
filled with clothes. Just gonna go over, cover the soil up over each one of them. Now I do want to clarify. If I had been sowing something like spindly in here, I would have moved the mulch out of the way. But but garlic sprouts are pretty they're pretty stiff. They're pretty strong. So I don't really have to worry about those um, those sprouts not making it up past my mulch. Plus this is a pretty thin layer of mulch that's already somewhat broken down. So I, I always want to clarify whenever I'm doing something that could potentially cause problems for people. But there's my little elephant garlic patch. Didn't do very much of that one this year. All right, I'm actually gonna save um, the rest of this to plant with my son Benjamin. I did a row so I could show you guys, but uh, he's not feeling well and he was really looking forward to this job. So I don't want him to feel like he had to miss out because he was sick. But I figured I would come in here and kind of finish telling you guys the details while I prepare these cloves. Uh, garlic takes, it really depends on your winter, but I would say it takes about five or six months if it is fall planted to come to maturity. If your ground has already frozen where you are and you did not get your seed garlic in, or maybe you just didn't get seed garlic and you didn't have an opportunity to plant any because you didn't buy any, you can spring plant garlic. Like as soon as the soil is workable, you can put it in. However, you don't always get very large heads in doing that, um, but you can do it. Um, and it, again, it might be one of those things that it's worth the experiment and it's worth trying. You will know your garlic is ready to harvest. Um, one, when hardneck starts putting off scapes, shortly after that, you're gonna harvest the, the bulbs. Um, you can pull one up and look at it if you think that you're getting close, but basically when the tops of the garlic start browning and falling over, it's not going to grow larger bulbs. At that point, when your garlic has begun to brown and fall over, that's as large as it's gonna get, and you can go ahead and harvest it then. Uh, you don't want to leave it in the ground too long past that point because those papery skins are gonna start breaking down and basically the storage capacity of that garlic is gonna degrade at that point. So you wanna get it out of the ground. Um, you do need to dry it. So if you can hang it, like if you've got, if you can like lay a cattle panel up somewhere and lay the garlic over and hang it, or um, if you can lay it flat on a table, like in a garage, um, and let it dry to where those pa the skins are papery. And at that point, uh, you can put it in to store it, like you can put hardneck garlic with the tops cut off in a box inside or in a, a pantry or root cellar. Um, and then at that point is whenever you would uh, braid soft neck garlic after it's cured and dried. Garlic is so much easier to grow than a lot of people think. For some reason, um, when people start gardening for the first time, they grow, you know, tomatoes and peppers and melons and they do a spring garlic garden. But uh, growing garlic over winter, you can do it in a container. Um, it doesn't have to be a deep container. That's kind of the beauty of, of growing it. You can do it in a grow bag uh, because you can plant garlic cloves you know four to six inches apart you can grow quite a few heads of garlic even just like in a nice shallow grow bag in some soil so i definitely encourage you to give it a try um don't be intimidated by it again all of this information is on my blog at rootsandrefuge.com and remember garlic that's planted has a much higher percent uh, chance of growing you something than garlic cloves that you threw in the trash because you thought you had missed the ideal window Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I bless you. Until next time.